let's talk about the gallery. Um, what can you tell me about its its history and maybe its uh, mission? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the gallery has been around for over 30 years now. Uh, it's founded by Celine and Heine Bastian back in the early 90s, and they had been collecting and working with artists from a very young age. Uh, Heine was the secretary to Joseph Boys. Uh, we still have a fine collection of Joseph Boys' works, and we did an exhibition of, of early sculptures by him in the gallery last year in London. Uh, which was a kind of unique opportunity to see a lot of these very delicate, precious objects uh, in the flesh in the UK. None of them had travelled to the, uh, to the UK before, so that was uh, a real highlight. But they they were very active in the art scene throughout the 80s, 70s, um, and worked with Andy Warhol, people like Cy Twombly. Uh, the gallery subsequently produced the catalogue resume for, uh, for Cy Twombly, uh, edited by Heiner. Like I said, the gallery has always had an ethos of high academic rigor. Uh, that's kind of, it's about protecting the legacy of the artists that we work with and celebrating them, obviously, for their, for their genius and for their, uh, the legacy that they have. But it would also be about giving them the kind of support and giving them the protection that they need in what can sometimes be kind of very unscrupulous circumstances. Right, and I understand that the gallery also publishes catalogs, artist monographs as well, and it does have online viewing rooms. Right now, I see there's an interesting Vim Vendors exhibition. He's one of my favorite filmmakers. Uh, yeah, well, I actually, Vim, I mean, Vim's a fantastic character, a wonderful filmmaker, but his journey through photography is a fascinating one. And yeah, we we're fortunate enough to have an exhibition of his Polaroids and other larger format photographs up at the moment, which will be running till the uh, end of the month and then and he's just yeah he's a wonderful wonderful visionary like he just has a natural eye when it comes to composing images and that's obviously evident in his films that he's made but when he works in photography he takes a very different approach because it's a very single-minded pursuit you have one man and a camera and he revels in the independence that photography gives him unlike filmmaking where he's part of a much larger team and the results are very striking because a lot of them really convey a sense of isolation uh, and i mean one of his favorite painters is, is the american edward hopper and you can clearly see the kind of americana influence and the idea of kind of isolation that comes that's in edward hopper's work in his photographs and you know speaking about online exhibitions and i guess also uh, isolation to a certain extent this prompts me to ask you a question regarding the times that we live in how would you describe the response how the gallery has responded to the pandemic it's thrown up some interesting questions uh, the biggest narrative of the last kind of three or four years with regards to the commercial side of the art world and the academic side to a certain extent is is how do you embrace technology? How do you use online platforms, virtual reality, podcasts even? Like how do you how do you engage with people without them being physically within the gallery space? And that has been sped up. Like the the transition to online material has been so drastic in the last six months since the kind of well really February time when it became apparent that there was likely to be an issue um, for the rest of the year, uh, and it's been it's been very very interesting to see how galleries have responded to this. I and mean, we've done a number of collaborations with people who have adopted the online viewing room platform, which we've already discussed. Uh, but there is it's interesting to see how other people have gone about it because some galleries have decided that it's not in their interests to really engage, and there is a clear limitation to what you can really convey through an online platform. Um, I mean, there are great some great painters and certainly secondary market artists whose work you know maybe has to be considered in light of its condition as well really need to be viewed physically and just to understand uh would you say that the bastion gallery would have been active in the online world before the outbreak we've been working towards it like i said we're probably one of those galleries which has been uh hastened into making a, a more concerted effort more faster than we would have done but there were plans in place for this year which would have come to fruition anyway it's there are obviously good cost benefits of trying to host exhibitions virtually as opposed to physically in the gallery so you have to be conscious of that and also there are people who 
really collect art visually through social media or through websites like who and there are artists as well who we can't ignore who are exclusively online artists and there isn't fabulous artists amongst them uh, and as obviously that has to be taken as the next logical step in art history that as with all art movements the kind of change change of technology and media has influenced art drastically and so you have to consider the internet and computers in general as being the next frontier.